Hello everyone. So we are starting our series uh, called MIST. And MIST is a term associated with uh, severe weather forecasting. So if you're ever going to uh, school for meteorology, you will learn about these four main ingredients. So um, MIST stands for moisture, instability, uh, shear, and trigger. So our four part series will be talking about these main ingredients uh, that go into severe weather forecasting. And we're gonna give you a little bit of tricks too. Um, if you're ever, you know, starting to storm chasing or anything like that, you want to probably uh, think about what we're gonna talk here. Before we start, uh, we'd just like to say you can find us, obviously, there's a Patreon page we have, so you can become a supporter um, on, on this page if you would like and uh, all, obviously you're probably seeing this on Facebook we are on Facebook and we're gonna go through our website as well so so before we even start talking about troughs and, and triggers and stuff let's talk about just the model website itself right so up here you're gonna have <clears throat> all these different hours and uh, they're basically Okay, they're basically hours, okay? So here we have this run. It's initiated on Monday, and you have all the different runs, previous runs. This is the latest one. So Monday, um, 18Z, so this is Zulu time, and uh, the army uses this. So meteorology, you'll get really, you'll get used to this really quickly, but this is 1 p.m. Central Daylight Time, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, etc. Um, so these are basically hours from the initiated hours, right? So this is 27 hours out, 51 hours out, forever. So to get used to these things, you just look at the chart itself. So watch this area here, okay? Tuesday, as I go up further, it will change. Wednesday, 4 p.m., you know, Thursday, etc. Uh, so this uh, this is won't change because this is your current initiated uh, forecast run so the nam here the 12 kilometer resolution has uh, four runs a day um, so anyways and these are your parameters okay so once you pick an hour so here we picked tuesday at 4 p.m central daylight time you have your all your different parameters we're going to talk about these right now but there's you know different parameters you can look at here bunch of stuff severe weather stuff winter stuff uh, so basically these are the things you input into the model so it's important to um, get used to this parameter to these parameters uh, thing you can also loop everything right you can you can you can make it into a, a gif and etc and you can just loop it Right, so I mean, you can do all kinds of fun, fun stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, you also up here, this is important as well. So up here, you have all your different models. So you have your regional models, uh, convection allowing models, ensembles, global models. Um, we're not gonna get. If you want, we can do an entire video just about models. But basically, uh, the ones you want to stick with for these kinds of things usually we stick with the gfs which is the uh, american model for long long range forecasting you see it's longer hours here and then we stick with the nam and we stick with the nam three kilometers um higher resolution <clears throat> for um for shorter range forecasting and then you have very short range uh, forecasting which is the hrr here so you have all ensembles and stuff and whatever. Um, so basically, you can go through these ones and you know, it's Canadian models, European models, um, yeah. And and this part here, where you, once you pick a model, you can zoom in. You can zoom into continental areas across the world. You can zoom into uh, national areas. If you pick a model that has Canada included, you can you can look at Canada. So you can look at the prairie provinces. 
so these are parameters you need to get used to. So you have your legend down here, and you have your this this up here tells you what what's going on, what what you put what parameter you put into the model, and um, see here you have your mean surface level pressure, and uh, you valid. So these things are you need to get used to if you're if you're gonna use uh, model model websites and uh, obviously different websites have different ways of looking at things and different models even like this one has only three models and if we look at cod we have all these models up here the cfs second version of the cfs is very limited with its products it only has four products on this website and um, you know it can go very far out up here you're up here into november right so to begin, we're going to talk about trigger and trigger is, yes, it's the last part of the mist, um, but we're going to talk about it first because this is the first thing you should probably look at when you're forecasting for any type of weather, uh, either snowstorms or uh, severe thunderstorms. So we're going to talk about what a trigger is and to begin, basically a trigger is anytime you hear about um, a front, cold front, warm front, dry line, trough. So we're going to talk about all of these things. And a trigger is basically an area where the atmosphere is being lifted and where basically you have thunderstorms or some kind of weather happening in that area. So we're going to talk about different forecast models. Uh, there's different websites. Uh, this one's Pivotal Weather. Uh, we have Twister data up here, we have the COD meteorology one, there are several other ones as well. But we're going to talk about trigger here, and trigger is, when you're talking about trigger, you're usually looking at the uh, 500 millibar chart here on the left. These are different heights in the atmosphere. Um, so it's several kilometers up in the atmosphere here, and you have your temperature. So here it's pretty classic, okay? So we're talking about right now, this is Monday at 1 p.m. And uh, you can see, you see this huge thing here is called a trough. And this area here is called a ridge. So basically you can see the little wind barbs here. Those are coming from the south in the ridge area. So you know this is all Gulf of Mexico things, uh, moisture coming up here. And here you see it's coming from the north, so here you have cold air being advected here into this area. This is the United States. Um, so here this huge trough here is depicting a lot of um, a lot of lifting going to happen on the eastern side of it, basically. So this will be our lifting me mechanism. This is the first thing. When you see something like this, you know that some type of weather is going to happen you know, in this area or up here, um, because there is strong, um, strong lifting occurring in the atmosphere. And if you want to look at that in terms of temperature, you can you can look at it here, and it's even more drastic. You see very cold temperatures up here. It's coming from the north, and you see this trough here, and you see the warm air up here. So it's always going to be uh, pretty cold because it's pretty high up in the atmosphere. But you can see it's ejecting in uh, what we call the southwest part, of, uh, southwestern part of the United States up here. Um, so one would expect there's thunderstorms going on somewhere in Texas, Oklahoma, uh, Kansas area. And in fact, if we pull our radar, we should probably expect some kind of thunderstorm activity in this area. There you go, there's a tornado warning up here. So as you can see, this trough is so, it's pretty intense actually. So it's so prominent that it's not unexpected. Yesterday there was a lot of tornadoes, in the Oklahoma, Texas area. And uh, this, this is all because of this trough here. So you can see the trigger is very important. So we're going to talk about the other ingredients that we look at 
um, to see if we're going to have severe th thunderstorms or just regular thunderstorms or even if we're going to have a snowstorm um, and all that stuff. So you can look at another website here. So this is Twister data. We're going to look at the, this is the wind speeds in knots. So the wind speeds are not fairly strong on the eastern side of this trough up here. If we move forward in time, so this is tomorrow, uh, you can see the trough moves on the east side of the Rockies. And up here it becomes downstream, what we call downstream. You can see it sort of amplifies. You see the winds are getting stronger. So there's some kind of deepening happening here. So there's going to be some kind of low in this area, surface low. Um, that's going to trigger thunderstorms and it's going to actually be the Colorado low that's going to impact Manitoba. And uh, if we look at it graphically, here you go. So here's your warm front. This was a forecast, okay? It's not currently happening. Here's your low. Here's your cold front up here. So just based on on uh, our chart here we can always al already see that there's some kind of front there's lows so there's the trigger for it and when we're talking about fronts the warm front is basically where warm air is being advected northward and the cold front is basically cold air being advected from the north and we already talked about this when we talked about our ridge and we talked about our trough, right? So our trough is where the cold air is coming in, the ridge is where the warm air is coming in, and these clashes of air masses we see here, that's gonna cause instability in the atmosphere. We're gonna talk about that later. But this is a strong trigger mechanism. So what does it look like when there's no triggers? Um, we can look at that bigger terms so this is for tomorrow in the United States so we can see that this trough is triggering thunderstorms in the Oklahoma area Texas area this is to be expected now we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about moisture next but we can't really tell right now if these are going to be severe or not. We need to look at other parameters. So we're going to talk about that next. But if you want a really easy way to look at fronts and and triggers, you can go to the National Weather Service website here, and you can go to their forecast maps. <coughs> their forecast maps basically have high resolutions of what's happening right now in the atmosphere, where the fronts are, uh, where the thunderstorms are expected, you can see here in the red area and the yellow area is basically along our trough. And we can also go into the future. So we can look 48 hours from now. Forty-eight hours from now you have in uh in, in on Wednesday, you have a strong cold front here, a warm front here, like we showed earlier and you can see precipitation and you can see the snowstorm that's going to impact Manitoba, uh, Minnesota, Northwest Ontario and, uh, and North Dakota. So all of this is forecasted because we see the strong trough ejecting. Um, so we can look at all of this in uh, bigger terms. So this is very like you're looking at the continent, you're looking at the what we call the, the mesoscale and uh, However, we can look at it in uh, terms of satellite real time. So we're going to do that. And here's a GO16 satellite. So this is real time, what's happening right now. You can see this warm air up here. That's our ridge, right? That's our ridge. The warm air is coming up. Here's our trough. You see the cold air up here? It's going up like this spinning over here but this is where our trough is and you see this this uh, these clouds are moving north following the ridge but their trough their trough is right in here right so it's right where it should be uh, for by according to forecast models 
So you see a lot of clouds associated with the warm air and the cold air up here. So if we want to go even uh, further, we can forecast for this. Um, called the world here. So we can look at the world map actually. And we can see we can see the different waves coming in. So there's a lot to play with here, but let's just look at uh, let's just look at North America for this. Here we go. So we're going to look at our 500 millibars again. So this is our winds at 500 millibars. And you can see the trough is ejecting down here, right? And then we look at it's moving off east. And then there's another one coming in, a smaller short wave. And boom, a big ridge up here. So you see western Canada, uh, western part of the United States. Now there's a ridge, right? There's southerly winds coming up here. So this is usually cold weather, fair weather. And boom, you have another one. So here, here you see it's not like a big wavy pattern anymore, right? So uh, this is called zonal flow. So zonal is basically uh, you don't have any major troughs, you don't have any major fronts, uh, you don't have uh, that trigger that we need for weather. So around this time, see October 22nd, this is just a model, right? So, I mean, it's pretty far out, but this is just an example of zonal flow. So zonal means that there's no triggers. So you would expect no, you know, no severe weather, no, no severe thunderstorms, no snowstorms. Um, and yeah, so this is an example of where you would not expect severe thunderstorms so in a pattern where we are in right now like this where there's a trough coming in that's good for severe weather so that's the first thing we're going to look at is the trigger so now we know there's a trigger we know that the area on the eastern side of the trigger somewhere in here uh, should be a good area where there's going to be lift in the atmosphere and where it should trigger uh, storms. Now we need to know are those storms going to be supercells or are they, are they going to be severe? So for that we're going to look at the other ingredients which are uh, smaller in scale. This is very large scale. It's a synoptic scale. So we're going to look at dynamics, thermodynamics and uh, even some smaller scale features. So tune in next week we're going to talk about the second ingredient that I usually look at for uh, forecasting for severe thunderstorms and uh, we're gonna look at instability actually next week because this is the second thing I look at is instability so we're not gonna do the mist in order uh, we're actually starting with trigger which is a bigger scale synoptic scale like large scale and then we're gonna go down more to the thunderstorm scale of things and we're gonna talk about instability because now we know this area there's going to be thunderstorms. Now we know we need to know: Will those thunderstorms be strong? Will they be severe? So we're going to look at that on our next video, which is going to be next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, just put it in the comments. I'll try answering most of your most of your uh, questions. You can also send us a personal message on the page, and we can send you uh, more information. Uh, if you're interested too, we can uh, send you all the links to all these websites. They're all free, so you can all take a look at uh, these forecast models.